Hi, hello, my name is Ollie Bliss and this is my channel book draw. For those of you who don't know, I enjoy looking at queer fiction and occasionally I make up some artwork about it. Today, I am doing a haul. I am doing a haul and I said I wasn't doing any more hauls. Quite bad because um, I had kind of told myself that I wasn't hauling it anymore because I have enough books and I don't have enough time to read them all. However, then it was Manchester Literature Festival. It's got all sorts of amazing uh, writers who are floating around. Luckily, I haven't had much enough time to see a lot of the speakers. However, I did see one very prolific writer who I have a huge amount of respect for, and that is <coughs> Alan Hollenhurst. Um, and he had a huge audience base who were there. It was a really interesting talk, um, and um, he's releasing this new book called The Sparshall Affair, um, which sounds like it's going to be a really good romp of a read. I have read um, two of his novels, The Spell. It's basically about when you're in the midst of a new relationship and it's exciting and new, but then that has a tendency to kind of dissipate. Um, and I found that quite refreshing to actually look at that challenge in terms of why do people stay together and what is holding them together. So I really enjoyed the spell. I've also read uh, The Line of Beauty um, and I enjoyed that book. I loved the style of the writing um, and the, some of the themes which played in that uh, story. I hated the character Nick. I found him incredibly incredibly frustrating and I just wanted to slap him across the face a few times. That said, it's still a fantastic book, um, happening at a really interesting time as well because it's kind of the height of Thatcher, it's also when the AIDS crisis is happening, but all of that is like surrounding noise um, to what's actually happening to the characters, Nick, um, and it's more about his relationships with this family. This is kind of similar in that sense, taking the standpoint of different points of history, but that is kind of periphery stuff. And instead, it is the, the focus is on like the lead character and his relationship. So this book starts off with David um, and his relationship with Everett, I believe. And um, but it's happening in a period where um, same-sex relations are still illegal. Um, and there's a scandal. Now I believe it doesn't go too far into what the scandal is actually about and again this is kind of a deliberate thing in terms of this book isn't about exploring a scandal, this is about the impact of a scandal and how it, it has an impact through generations. It then flashes forward, I think it's Johnny who's the character, um, to his life and he's finding out about this scandal um, and how it impacts on his life. I think this cover is beautiful and stunning. It's got these frames and the way that they are layered over each other and that's because I think it's about the way in which um, you look or view on a world and the way those lenses can um, collide or obscure or change your perception. But I think it's also about um, the, the fact that one of the characters' job is to restore paintings. So it's nicely tied in together. And someone who is queer and into the kind of arty um, world and history um, is something that I will probably identify with and tap into. So I'm looking forward to giving this one a go and trying out another one of his books. We'll see how it goes. Then what happened is I also have been um, doing a bit of uh, going across the country because of work in terms of working around the north and I keep on stepping into charity shops so I feel kind of totally justified for buying these because they're only like two quid a pop um, each um, and you know supporting charity shops at the same time so it's very worthy of me to be doing this so it feels like a totally justifiable haul in that sense. Ones which were picked up um, Patricia Highsmith's The Talented Mr. Ripley. I don't feel like this one needs too much of an introduction. Matt Damon and Jude Law um, in terms of when it became a movie, freaking loved that movie. Particularly loved um, his uh, cover of My Funny Valentine. That was amazing. Uh, but I'm just interested to actually read the book and see how that goes. And then have these two crime novels, uh, Death Scene by Jeremy Beadle and 
uh, Maud Farrell skid. So I have absolutely no idea what these will be like, but these are kind of uh, from the 80s period and they're both linked to um, different queer themes um, whilst solving crime. So, you know, that's going to be interesting and fun ride. I also love these old covers. I, you know, I really like covers in general, but when they're this kind of, I don't know what it is about them, it's, they're, they're like cheesy romance novels, but they just, they look like they've got a little bit of messaging going on in there, and I'm curious to find out how they relate to each other. But this is Sweaters and um, Cigarettes, which is by Mika Fox, um, and this basically sounds like the high school experience which I never had, but always wanted. I'll just read the back and see what you think. Uh, Theo can't stop looking at Max with those black clothes and piercings and that, that's a uh, sarcastic charm that's enough to intimidate pretty much anyone. He's not exactly what you call ordinary, especially when um, Theo is as ordinary as it gets. For a high schooler, along with his insecurity and his awkwardness that comes with it. That literally sounds like me desiring pretty much any alternative um, indie boy that's going. Um, and never really had that opportunity to explore that side of myself, so I will happily vicariously do that through this book instead. Uh, so here's the book which I've uh, just hauled. I hope um, they've opened up some interesting ones. I think they're a bit more eclectic, a bit uh, weirder, even though all of them, I think, are uh, basically white men getting on in different ways. Apologies. but um, So that's what I've hauled right now. <laughs> uh, and I will see you again sometime soon.